Hey everybody, Dong here. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the observable macro, one of my favorite features that came out with iOS 17 and the Xcode beta. So, I work a lot with Vue with uh, MVVM, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial, I guess you could say, on what you did before and what iOS 17 and the observable macro has allowed me to do and some of the benefits and why I really do like it right so basically let's just say that I'm gonna create like a really quick app here it's nothing gonna be complicated so what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna create here a Swift file I'm going to name it person right and in the past if you wanted to create a view model for example you would typically do something like class we'll say person and you would conform it to the observable object then obviously you would have a published variable uh, what should we do so let's just say that we are going to do count nice and easy what else can we do let's say this person's going to obviously have a name name and it's going to be of type string published what else should a profile have I'm just doing this off the top of my head so bear with me real quick here we'll do a bio that's gonna be a type string let's see and we'll just do that for now and obviously it's complaining because we need an init function which we're gonna define here right so let's go back to our content view so this is kinda of the old way that we would do it right so in the old way, we would also need to go into the content view and we need to create a state object. Person equal to person count zero name John Doe bio. I don't have a lorem ipsum right now, but I'm going to pretend like it's a lorem ipsum. You get the deal, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna remove this boilerplate over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, okay, so it's complaining about something. Person one. Nice and easy here. Uh, probably better to name it lowercase person to avoid that. So basically I'm gonna create a text here and I'm going to go let's see here we're gonna go person dot name right we are going to go bio so text person dot bio we're gonna go text so count is of type uh, integer so we need to string interpolate it so this is going to be person dot count people and then we're going to create a button here label and then we're going to go with text add person Right, I'm not gonna bother styling it in this video. You could use like padding and shit, but that's really not the point of this video. It's not a Swift UI video. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go person dot count plus minus one, such that when we add this, we can see that our people is increasing, right? So this is the old way that you would do it. And you could do this with like a view model, for example, and basically it would subscribe to the changes that you make in the UI and in the observable object, right? But with the new method with iOS 17, what we're able to do is we're able to use the observation. And what we need to do to change this is we need to go observable class person. We're gonna remove the observable object. And that's basically all we need to do, right? And now it's complaining that 
the state object needs the observable object, but we can actually remove this, and we could just leave it as var person, right? So essentially, what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to remove a lot of the boilerplate, and it looks like I have a bunch of errors here, which I forgot to remove the published. So that's one of the things that it allows us to do is it allows us to remove all these published over here and it allows us to make a little bit more verbose code and it also helps us to not decide whether we're going to use say an observable object or a state object because this is one of the things that used to confuse me when I was a beginner to Swift UI was, you know, do I use state object or observable object? What this new method allows us to do is one, it increases our app performance because let's just say that we were to uh, add this people, right? Obviously, we're not really changing the bio or the name, right? These are quote unquote static properties, but that would mean that if we recognize that uh, in the old way, that we did that name and bio were static then we would need to remove the published but what if we needed to do that in the future then we need to add the publish back in and it just helps us to not only increase the app performance but prevent mistakes across the board right and obviously one of the things is it's very beginner friendly which is always something that i really like so it's kind of a two-in-one here that's kind of why I like this new change in uh, in iOS 17 and in Xcode 15. As of recording this video, I am on beta 6, right? So obviously these things can change as the betas come out, as the final releases come out. But, you know, this is really helpful because, you know, especially when you're working a lot with uh, MVVM, working with your view models and stuff like that, this observable can be very very helpful and the nice thing about it is you don't have to go back and change all of your code from observable objects to at observable you can slowly start to and slowly start to move towards that so that's another thing that i really like about this so this is just a quick video on one of my favorite parts of you know uh observation ios 17 and xcode in the next video maybe if i get enough likes Leave me a comment, tell me what you thought about in the comment section. I might also make a video on Swift Data, because that's another really cool feature that uh, I've observed, no pun intended, in uh, Swift and Xcode that I've been playing around with. So let me know in the comment section below if you want to see a video on that. And without further ado, make sure you hit that subscribe button as it really helps support the channel and lets me know that you enjoy content like this. And without further ado, I'll see you in the next video.